Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday. It's time for our weekly e-blast. It's also election day, so I'm drinking from my official presidential cup today. Uh, no, I'm not the president, but I do have a cup, so praise the Lord. And uh, I want you to get out and vote if you haven't. But no matter uh, if you voted early or voting today, get it done. It's important that we all do this. We are children of God, children of light. And it's our responsibility, if we have these opportunities, to take them and realize that we can make a difference in the culture that we're living in. But no matter what the outcome is today, hey, your candidate gets it or not, you have to understand Jesus is still Lord. He is the king of all kings. He's the president of all presidents. And we love him and we trust him for everything going on in the world today. It was interesting to note that uh, if you're a member of Believer's Fellowship, you, you hopefully been reading along with this in the chronological Bible this year. And uh, in the chronological Bible readings that we had for this week and leading into the rest of this week, we're talking about the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus. But there's one part in there where Jesus and, and Pilate are standing face to face in this epic moment. And Pilate says, you know, I have the authority to release you or to crucify you. To which Jesus responds, you would have no authority up at all if it were not given to you of my Father in heaven. Listen to that carefully, folks. All authority comes from above, the book of Romans says. I believe in the sovereignty of God over the nations. I believe that God sets up nations. I believe he pulls down nations. Jeremiah says that the nations are as a drop in the bucket to God, and he puts over them whoever he desires. So we understand as believers that God's still in charge of the, of the world, and he's still the king of the world, and we have to trust him. You know, even Peter said that in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2, around verse 17, he's talking to the church how they should live their life and walk in the, in the place that they were in and how they should respond to the culture around them. But he says, you know, he said in, to, to the church, says, you fear, you fear God, that's number one, and two, you honor the king. Fear God, that's our first responsibility. We love, we worship, we fear God, we trust God above all things else, and then we honor the king. As Christians, you know, even though this, this it, ignored pretty much in the culture we're living in. It's not our place to disparage the rulers that are around us. All right. We should be praying for them. We should be voicing our 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 our, our opinions and when to get the opportunities, casting our votes when we get the opportunities, but to sit down and constantly disparage those who are over us in response in places of responsibility. Uh, that's not what God's called us to do. He said we just honor. Why? Why do we honor somebody that's made perhaps a wicked king? Well, remember, when Peter wrote that to the church, Nero was in charge, and he was burning Christians at the stake, all right? So we have, there's, a, there's a principle in, 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 in the universe that God is over all things and that he puts in charge who he wants in charge to carry out his will and to get his will done. So we honor the Lord first, and we vote our conscience second, and number three, we do honor authority over us. So pray for them, as the Bible says, and encourage one another to pray for them, but ultimately it's not our choice to be speaking curses under people and about people. Let's honor the Lord. So I shouldn't be in that position. I think a good illustration of that about the power of God and the sovereignty of God over the nations. And I don't think a lot of people understand that about history and nations that are torn down and nations that are displaced. You know, everybody's casting all these remarks out. They, they invade or they, like, God's over all that. We need to understand that whether we like it or whether we even understand or not, God is over the nations. And Daniel uh, thinks a really good illustration of this. It's a prophetic book about how God works through the nations. And you see in Daniel chapter 2, that image of all the nations that God will allow to come into existence prior to the return of Jesus Christ. How God will deal with those nations, who will be brought up, who will be allowed to rule in the world. And Daniel, God is dealing with, with Nebuchadnezzar because he's so arrogant. He's seen this great vision of himself as the, as the greatest kingdom of all time. And how every kingdom after that is going to be a lesser kingdom. And a couple chapters later, he has another dream and nobody can can interpret it and it's about how this angel comes down and this great tree grows up and it's cut down and uh, there's this message in there that Nebuchadnezzar I, I don't understand it so he calls him Daniel also known as Belteshazzar and Daniel's a little bit troubled to share the dream because it's about Nebuchadnezzar himself and how the Lord's going to deal with him and 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 bring him to a place of humility and so he tells him what it means he says you're the tree you're going to be brought down to nothing. You're going to wander around like a wild, mad beast in the fields, and you're going to, hair is going to grow on you like a wild animal. You're going to lick the dew off the grass. And for a time, until you come to your senses, you're going to have to live like this. And it happened. God reduced him to like an animal in the fields. And, and, and Daniel said, the reason why is because you won't repent of your sins and you won't repent of your arrogance. So God's going to allow this to happen to you. 
But the bottom line is in, in, in verse 17. I, I have it written down here. Let me just share this verse 17 from Jack, Daniel chapter 4. It says, by the decree of the sisters, and this is, uh, this is the angel speaking in the vision. By the decree of the sifters is the sentence. And by the saying of the holy ones, the requirement, catch this, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High is ruler in the kingdom of men and to whom he wills, talking about God, to whoever God wills, he gives leadership to those kingdoms. Even the lowest of men or the basest of men doth he raise up over it. So somewhere in our walk in life, even though we don't get our way in elections, we've got to understand that God is at work in the world and God is at work in the nations. And I trust him and I believe you should trust him as well. So for that reason, one, that means as a child of God in his kingdom, I am always on the winning side. So I don't have to walk around in depression, all right, or go get drunk because somebody didn't get elected. I won't elect it. I'm going to love God. I'm going to choose to serve him as my king. I'm going to love people. And like you, we're going to love God, love people, and reach the world. Remember, God loves you today. And no matter what the outcomes may be, Jesus is still the Lord of all things. Trust him with everything today. He loves you. God bless you. Have a great day.